All right, I know that some of you are getting a little bit tired of the top lists, but they're fun to do and people really enjoy them. So we figured, hey, let's do a few of them. But this is Top 5 Friday, it doesn't even count. But don't worry, we have more Game Chasers on the way, we have more Toy Chasers on the way, but let's not even think about that right now. Let's think about Top 5 Friday, and this topic today is brought to us by a Patreon member. I asked the question, what kind of topics would you like to see on Top 5 Friday? And Tim Leffler, Tim Leffler wrote, Top 5 Worst Childhood Rentals. I think that's a good topic. We all did it as kids, if you grew up with rental stores. You would go and rent a game, look at the box cover, maybe it's a franchise of something you enjoy or a licensed game of a movie that you enjoyed and you picked it up and you're like, oh, this is gonna be a fun little rink weekend uh, getaway playing this game, but then it turns out to be just utter ass. So without any further ado, let's get to the theme song. It's Friday night, don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I could sit here and pick my nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, oh. Top by Friday, top by Friday tonight. I don't know why. I'm, I'm still questioning this, but for some reason, Chris got to pick games to rent every so often on Friday nights. And like, I didn't understand that because this fool was like six years younger than me. He didn't know anything about video games. He's like running around like a five or six year old. Screw that, I'm the oldest. I'm the one that reads Nintendo Power. I don't even know if he could read. I'm the one that knows what all cool, awesome games were that were coming out. He should have deferred to me on every one. But unfortunately for, well, fortunately for him, I guess, and unfortunately for me, that wasn't always the case. One of those that he came home and rented was Super Off-Road. Now, let me just come out and say, this isn't a horrible game. I mean, it's not great either. It is what it is. If you're into racing little toy cars around a dirt track, over and over and over and over and over again. Hey, this is the game for you. And unfortunately, Chris was into racing games. Now, he would score sometimes and bring home something like uh, Road Rash when he would bring his Genesis over, but sometimes he would fail. And this one is, it's not, like I said, it's not horrible, but it's not great either. It's boring. I got about 30 minutes of entertainment out of this, if that. Chris probably spent every waking moment on through that entire weekend playing it for all I know. I don't I don't remember because I, I just like said screw this, turned it off and went outside and threw rocks at the barn because that was more exciting. So this one was totally my screw up. I, I, I take blame for this one. The movie Home Alone was huge back when we were growing up and we loved the movie. Couldn't, we watched it like a million times. I was actually about the same age as Kevin, I think. We'll give or take a year or two. But uh, yeah, when I, when I saw the game, I knew I had to rent it. And I unfortunately wish that I, ha I hadn't rented this just piece of garbage. You can literally beat the thing in like 20 minutes or 15, 20, however basically you're trying to keep the burglars at bay, set traps before the cops come and the cops will eventually come and rescue you. I will say this for the game, it is really heart pounding. It really is. Like you're sitting there trying to get through this house and, and, and get, get to the end before the time limit runs out. The burglars will get trapped in a, in a trap and then you try to get out of there and then like they spring back up and chase after you and they're faster than you. And it's it really is kind of like a you're trapped with burglars in, well, they actually, if they were going for that heart pounding sort of like frantic feeling of being trapped in an actual house, being chased by burglars, then hey, maybe they actually have a winning formula there. It's just the, the game just is not very good. And if you've played it, you probably already know this. And why do I even have it in the box? And I, not only do I have it in the box, I have it protected with the, the game's not in here. The game's actually on the shelf, so I have easy access to it in case I actually want to play it. But the box is, is sitting up there on my shelf like it's something, like it's, like what? I think it's because I just, it's nostalgia. It, it really is. And uh, like I was saying before, it's, it's, yes, it sucks. It's horrible. 
but I do have nostalgia for it. You Sometimes you just have nostalgia for really bad games. That's just how your brain works because you're, you associate it with, you know, growing up and those awesome nights running video games on the weekends, so. So Saturday morning cartoons were huge back uh, when we were growing up. I say that so much, I feel like I just should get a tape recorder and say back when we were growing up, back in our day, back whatever. I feel like such an old man here. Regardless, back in our day, Saturday, I don't even know, Saturday morning cartoons still a thing, but they were back then, and one of the biggest ones I was into was X-Men. And I wasn't into reading the comic book, I never was. Uh, but when this cartoon first aired, it was my, kind of like my first introduction to X-Men. Uh, and so I really enjoyed it. So we rented the game and it was one of the worst games we ever rented. It was absolutely atrocious and still is to this day. It hasn't gotten better. And this is one of those games that's really bad and I still, I don't have any nostalgia for it. You could take out the part where the computer insists on playing. Like you, you, you can play one player. Me and Chris were, would play two players obviously, but you could still play one player and the computer insisted on playing itself like it was a spoiled kid or something. And it just, it just, the mechanics were just so broken in this game. And don't even get me started on the graphics. Like, there were times where you didn't even know where to go because the graphics were just so bad. There was just pixelated garbage everywhere. You didn't know what you could go through or what you could walk over. And it, you didn't know where to go or anything. It was just boring. Maybe I got like a couple of hours of entertainment out of this, but that was about it. And it was nothing that I ever even considered running again. And nothing that I, Look, it says $2 on here. I don't know where I picked this up. Maybe it was like at a flea market or something like that, but $2, it's not even worth that. This next one is one that I actually recently saw on a video from Mike and James. They were doing a Let's Play of, of it, and I immediately just jogged my memory. It was just really fun to watch two other people go through the same misery I did when I rented this, and that's the Rocketeer. The sad thing about it is, I actually liked The Rocketeer on the NES. Uh, that was one of the ones that we rented, and in my opinion, it was a hit. So I figured, hey, if this is on Super Nintendo, it's gotta be even better. Well, it really isn't, and by a long shot. You start off this game by flying, and the controls are just so awful. Now, I'll give them credit, they kinda tried to go for this variety of stages, and you do get that, but the variety of stages are boring, and they just go on way, way, way too long. They're boring shooting stages, and they go on, and on, and on, and on, and on, kinda like me talking in this video, and you just want it to stop. I actually ended up beating the game game back in whenever I rented it and that was just because I was so bored I guess that it just it didn't I was like what else am I gonna do right this is another one Chris effed up on so this comes back to his mother um, now look she, she was trying to do the right thing uh, she saw that we were renting a bunch of games where you're shooting people in the face. Now, wow, I hate to see her reaction if she, sh if she saw the games of today, like Grand Theft Auto. Games where you're going around shooting people and stuff like that. She was just like, should they be playing that kind of stuff? Uh, believe it or not, parents back then were questioning whether or not a plumber jumping on Goombas and Turtles was too violent for kids. It, that was a thing back then, as stupid as it sounds. But anyway, she convinced him that, hey, you should start renting racing games. Hence, off-road, stuff like that. And there was one time where they were both at the rental store and they saw a game on the shelf and I don't think that he necessarily wanted to get it, but she was like, you should get that, son. It's a wholesome game and you can learn. You should get it. This fool <laughs> walks, in the walks in the door proudly displaying the game that he had just rented, Bible Adventures. I'm, and I'm just sitting there looking at him like, are you serious? Look, when it comes to the colored dream games and the wisdom tree games, there are worse out there. Ones that I won't even touch. Bible Adventures is at least a game that I can put in and play to a degree. And I do have a little bit of, a little bit of warm nostalgia for it just because of the whole nature of playing it for the first time and, and, and all that. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I still pop it in from time to time and play the game. Uh, I'll only do Noah's Ark because that's the only one that I got any sort of iota of enjoyment out of. Um, and when I say iota of enjoyment, I'm just like talking minuscule. Uh, 
it was not a good weekend that weekend. And look, if I was to do a top 20 of most hated games, this game probably wouldn't even make the list. In fact, I know it wouldn't make the list. I don't hate it. But back then, as a kid, when you're ready to blast some aliens in the face, or punch some clowns, or do something really cool to get out your aggression on a Friday night when you've been picked on all week at school, the last thing you want to do is rescue animals, put them in the ark, and play Bible adventures. And it definitely is the most infamous rental story I have and Chris has growing up. So this naturally, despite not being a game that I hate, had to be number one on my list. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate all you guys' comments and uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for everyone on Patreon who answered the questions. And like I said, I will pick a couple more and do them um, at some point so thank you so much for everyone who participated and let me know let me know let me know let me know in the comment section below what your most hated rental was when you were a kid and do you think rental stores will one day make a comeback that's something we kind of made uh, maybe have a discussion about maybe but anyway uh yeah subscribe right here video here maybe you haven't seen one of the top 20s or 10s or whatever we've done i promise you the channel's not turning into a top 10 or 20 channel it's just youtube wants us to make more videos or it kills the channel so we got to do it um and down below is patreon if you want to support us there and shirts and dvds and down below